dear students we are continuing with the let's understand organic chemistry series part 2 okay here we are going to understand some important name or some basic name reactions so students we are going to study today what the name reactions okay when we hear about the name reactions in organic chemistry mainly the students they think that yes what is that we have to learn it and we'll write the answers but yes this is not true okay if there are name reaction it means they have some importance okay and all the name reactions are different it means there is some logic behind that isn't it it is not that all the reactions are said to be name reactions, isn't it? Only few are said to be name reaction. It means those reactions have some importance. They are different from each other and they are important and they are being used in organic chemistry. So some of the reactions today I will discuss with you all and I will try to make you all understand yes how you can understand that and you can write the name reactions okay in the board's exams when these name reactions also come of two or three marks okay what happens so you learn it and you write it okay but I want you all to just understand it okay so that you will not feel difficulty because sometimes by hurting it you may forget it okay and yes in competitions it, are, it is asked and in competitions by hurting will not work because the questions are being totally uh, twisted and it is being made zigzag and you have to answer that and if you know the basic principle it becomes easy for you okay so let us start with Canizaro's reaction okay so what is this Canizaro's reaction okay in this we will be taking an organic compound which doesn't consist of any alpha hydrogen in it. Okay. And those compounds, organic compounds which doesn't have alpha hydrogen in it gives what? The Canizaro's reaction. Okay. So when I talk about the alpha hydrogen, I think you might be understanding it or not. Shall I explain you this also? See, what happens? Here I have taken what? Formaldehyde. Okay. This formaldehyde you have you are seeing with there is no other C in which H is attached. So here alpha H is missing in this organic compound. And yes, now it will give this Canizaro's reaction. Yes, it will give. So what will happen? We are taking this formaldehyde, reacting with what? Sodium hydroxide, which is concentrated. The product which we get in Canizaro's reaction is an alcohol and a salt. So here the reaction which we have taken the formaldehyde okay or you can say methanol also okay reacting with what concentrated uh, NaOH sodium hydroxide you are getting what methanol plus what sodium acetate but yes you remember that yes when any organic compound where alpha H is missing reacting with concentrated NaOH will give the product of a salt and an alcohol okay now coming to carbon amine reaction okay this is an again having a different name it is totally entirely different from Canizaro's isn't it so here carbon amine reaction when we say so what happens in this reaction what is the importance in this reaction actually in this the one degree it means the primary amines only get reacted only okay not the secondary or the tertiary okay so here it forms what the primary amines are reacted and they forms isocyanide and this isocyanide has got an unpleasant smell okay so here let us see the reaction now yes you have taken a primary amine okay added what what is this chloroform and alcoholic koh koh okay so here when you heat it you get what isocyanide over here okay and I said you in the previous class also, yes, byproducts are very easy to take out because they are stable in nature. You will be getting what? KCl and H2O. Okay. So when I am saying this isocyanide, the difference over here is from the cyanide is what? Here the nitrogen gets attached to the carbon atom. Okay. So this you should remember. 1 degree amine, isocyanide is formed. What is that isocyanide? If you have understood, carbon amine reaction becomes easy for you all to understand and write it. Now let us study the third reaction, okay? That is the hell wall head Zelensky reaction, okay? That is HVZ reaction, okay? So here we will be taking uh, the aliphatic 
ऐसे कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड ग्रुप फंक्शनल ग्रुप इट इज इज इन इट सो वी बी टेकिंग ओनली द एलिफेटिक वन मींस द चेन वंस नॉट द रिंग वंस ओके हियर द अल्फा हाइड्रोजन मस्ट बी प्रेजेंट सो व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय अल्फा हाइड्रोजन आई हैव सेड यू राइट नाउ ओके विद द फंक्शनल ग्रुप अ कार्बन शुड बी देयर इन व्हिच हाइड्रोजन शुड बी प्रेजेंट ओके लाइक हियर इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस हियर व्हाट हैपेंस यू कैन सी हियर in this this is the functional group the first carbon here hydrogen is attached all the hydrogen which is present over here will be alpha hydrogen okay next if more another carbon is there hydrogen is there beta it will be okay and so on okay so here we'll be seeing that when this reaction they give what alpha halo acids how let us understand with the help of an example okay so here you can see we have taken acetic acid ch3coh consisting of what the alpha hydrogen okay which is the compulsion i said for this reaction isn't it and here we have added what chlorine chlorine molecule cl2 red phosphorus okay so what happens here by product we are taking out first that what it will be forming it will be reacting with one of the cl one h will be reacting with the cl and it will its cl will be given out and the product this one cl the cl which is left over will be joined with what ch2 because from here what has been removed one hydrogen has been removed okay now again we are proceeding with the reaction same okay we cl2 phosphorus again it cl is being given out as by product okay and another one more cl is getting attached and one hydrogen is being removed you can see here it is ch2 here it is ch in place of that what has came now chlorine again proceeding with the reaction with the same form only chlorine molecule phosphorus again at cl by product removed out and now you are seeing that all which you have seen over here was h has been replaced by what chlorine isn't it this chlorine is what a halogen isn't it and so what is being now formed the halo acid isn't it so what happens in this reaction alpha halo acids are formed okay now let us study hoffman bromamide reaction okay so what is important in this reaction actually here the amides are being changed into or converted into what one degree amine or primary amines okay so when i am talking about amides what is amides it will be c double bond o combined with what nh2 okay when i am talking about one degree amine it will be what nh2 okay and if i am saying about secondary amine it becomes what nh okay and if i am saying about the tertiary amine it is n okay remember that now in this reaction the product side with the compound which is formed having has got what one less carbon atom okay and in this reaction we will be seeing a degradation it means something is being broken down and it is it is being removed okay so now let us take the example okay we have taken the example of a amide group over here okay here what is happening in the amide group i said it, it consists of what c double bond o okay and here when we are taking this amide group we are adding what bromine and what potassium hydroxide what we are getting we are getting ch3nh2 what is this methyl amine okay and what is this amine a primary amine okay and yes of course by products you will get that those are also stable that is what k2co3 okay okay and kbr and water isn't it potassium carbonate potassium bromide and water thing in this reaction what you have to remember actually this is a very important reaction for the competitions okay they will be giving you this and they will be saying the saying that how this primary uh, amines will be formed okay you just have to remember that if we are adding bromine and potassium hydroxide to a amide group we will be getting a primary amine here when we are seeing this three 
things which we have said that yes, this happens in this reaction. We have seen yes, this amide group is after reaction is we are getting what one degree or the primary amine. Okay, here the product which has been formed, you are seeing one carbon atom is less over here. And the third we have talked about what degradation reaction. Here you have seen what happens when it is reacting with bromine and this potassium hydroxide. This C double bond O is broken and you are getting a primary I mean this is being removed and so here what is happening degradation is being taking place so this is the importance of this word the Hoffman bromide reaction now let us study the fifth reaction that is hydroboration reaction okay so here also this re reaction also have some importance isn't it so here what happens actually in this reaction there is addition of what H2 okay and here alkene is being used in the reactant okay and it follows anti markenikov's rule anti markenikov's rule do you remember okay markenikov and anti markenikov rule okay suppose if you are getting a um, product like c uh, in this you will be seeing what in this double bond okay okay now here, if we are adding anything, suppose if we are taking Cl2, okay. So what will happen in this, in this, you will be seeing where will this chlorine get attached, okay. The thing is that either it can be attached over he, uh, here, this bond can be broken and this can be formed a negative ion or here, okay, it will be forming isn't it? So here if this is being taken by this naturally what will happen a positive sign will be coming over here and here what will happen this chlorine will get attached okay if in this side it is taking the negative sign and this is becoming a positive one this carbocation will not be stable okay so naturally here it will get attached to this carbon which will be more stable and that is the Markenikov's rule. When we are talking about anti markenikovs rule, here we will be using what? H2O2. Okay. And as soon as we are using H2O2, we will be understanding that it is the anti markenikovs rule. Now what happens? Where here this carbocation was formed, now this side carbocation will be formed and here it will be attached. OH will be attached okay and that is the anti markenikovs rule so in this reaction we will be seeing what the anti markenikovs rule is being followed okay so we have taken an alkene okay ch3 ch double bond ch2 okay in this this is a hydroboration reaction naturally we will be taking what borohydride bh3 isn't it and we will be taking what tetrahydrofluorine okay as a reagent so naturally what will happen over here will be seeing that all this H present in this BH3 will be used up with this reactant. It will react with this reactant to form the compound CH3, CH2, CH2, um, bracket close, whole 3, okay, and B. And here now we are adding what? Hydrogen peroxide. As soon as we are adding hydrogen peroxide, we understand it is being following what the anti markenikovs rule. And here we will be seeing what this OH will be attached to the end of the carbon atom which is present, okay, which is unstable in nature. Okay, it is not following the markenikovs rule, and as a result, we will be getting the product CH3, CH2, CH2. This OH has came from here, it will be attached to this last carbon atom. So this is about what hydroboration reaction. It is importance. Yes, here H2O is being added and here alkene is being used and it follows what the anti markenikovs rule rather than following the markenikovs rule. Okay. So this is these five reactions we have discussed today, beta. In the next classes, coming classes, we will be discussing more. Okay. So good day. Take care.